Now we're going to show you how to bleed the Magura hydraulic disc brake. Why do you want to bleed it? Well, first of all, if you think or if you at least have the suspicion that there is air trapped inside the hose, this will have a huge negative effect on the braking performance. So you want to make sure by all times that there is no air inside. First of all, it's easy to get the caliper off the frame. This will allow you to maneuver a bit around and makes it easier to bleed the system. So always take off the caliper. As we did not fully tighten the caliper while we were assembling it, it's relatively easy to take them off. Next step, we're going to remove the brake pads. In order to do so, you loosen up this bolt. Take it out and then the brake pads come out easily since they're magnetically attached. In order to make sure that during the bleeding you have the correct distance between the left and the right piston, you add the plastic Magura part. You see that the widest part should be there where the pistons are. That will take up the space of the pad and the pad holders. And you put it in position just like this. Next step is to open up the bleed board, which is here. You want to make sure that the bleed board is always on top, because if you want to take out the air, it has to be at the highest point. So you open up the bleed board, and you take out the screw. Normally if the system is completely filled with oil, you will see the oil dripping out of here. So what you do then, is you raise the element to make sure that the oil goes down a little bit. Now since there's a large amount of air trapped inside, you don't see any oil yet. No worries, we're going to take that out. For that, we're going to use the syringe. The syringe is part of the standard Magura bleeding kit. I filled it up with the, uh, what they call the royal blood, which is the mineral oil that Magura is using. On the end, you see the nipple that goes into the disc. So you use an 8mm wrench in order to snug it. Don't over torque it, just make sure it's in. Now we can leave the system as it is. Now we're going to attach the second syringe without the plunger onto the lever. As you notice, the lever is now tilted under an angle of 45 degrees upwards. As we are pushing oil through the system, I'm going to use my goggles again to make sure that my eyes do not get in touch with the, uh, with the mineral oil. Don't worry, it's mineral oil, so it doesn't harm you. Anyway, we open the bleed board on top of the lever. And make sure you don't lose this one. It has a small o-ring that actually closes off the whole system. Once that is removed, we put a plunger or a syringe without the plunger into the bleed port. You push it down like that. Now we're basically going to mimic a four stroke. That means we're going to push the syringe, push the oil in the system so it comes out, out of the top syringe. Then I'm going to start to pull slightly to create a certain vacuum inside the system that will take out the air bubbles. Then again, I'm going to push in the oil and uh, create a vacuum again afterwards. So it's a four stroke. So I'm slightly pushing oil now, very gently. And you will see that the oil level will rise on the lever. Just want to make sure it's completely filled with oil. Now I'm going to create a, vac a vacuum by pulling at the puncher. You see some air bubbles escaping. The vacuum is there. Gonna push the oil level again. And then I'm gonna pull again. Create a vacuum.
slowly lower the oil level in the upper syringe. A little bit of trap there there. That's fully gone. So now your system is completely filled up. All you have to do now is to make sure when you remove the ports you don't spill too much oil. In order to do so we go back to the upper level. Now we're going to take off the syringe and put back the close cap. Put your thumb on it. And we're going to close the cap. Make sure you put a little bit of pressure on the syringe below in order to make sure that it's completely filled with oil. Now you see it's completely filled with oil. So you will spoil a little a bit of oil as soon as you close the, uh, the hole. But that's okay. So slowly thread it in, pushing out the oil and bobs your uncle. We're now going to open the lower part again. So we're going to raise it to make sure that the oil doesn't run out. And use the 8mm wrench to simply unscrew it. Last part you can do by hand. Wait. So the oil is leaking out of the syringe, which is okay. As you can see, the oil level is now high, and it's okay, so I can close it off. I use the closing nipple, put it in, and simply torque it in. sure it's tight. Yep. And we're going to put back in the brake pads and remove the plastic piece. Brake pads go in from the back. They're magnetic. Put back the bolt to keep the plate holders where they are and simply, simply assemble the bolt like this. And fix it. Now you can simply put on uh, the caliper back onto the frame. Put it in position again. Torque it in, not all the way down, since we still need to adjust the caliper itself once the wheel and the rotor is in. We're now going to make sure that the caliper is properly aligned with the rotor. There's a simple trick to do that actually. is to use a simple rubber band and you put it over the lever and the handlebar just to make sure that the lever is more or less like in braking motion. Now the caliper is firmly in line with the rotor. So basically next step we're going to do is tighten up the bolts. sure that they're properly fixed. Then we release the rubber band again and the rotor spins freely.